off of it for a moment and then kind of swam back down to it. So hmm. uh, if you are in contact with the seafloor, you definitely can feel it. In fact, when we put seismometers on the seafloor, one of the things we work really hard to do is to couple them well with the seafloor um, because as the energy transfers from the seafloor to the water column, a lot of it is or it's much more difficult to, to detect. So I would love to to you know witness a, a subsea eruption, uh, but you have to get real lucky because uh, you know we don't know when or where they will occur precisely, and it's a big ocean. In fact, a couple of years ago, I decided to count up all the known eruptions in the deep sea. And my expectation is that as time went on, oh, there's one of the leaf sponges, um, that we'd you know, be finding more and more of them each year uh, you know, as technology improved. But they're pretty much all found by serendipity, and we find about two a year. Sorry, Adam, as we're cresting, I'll, uh, we'll get some more zooms and all. I'm just trying to get a little bit ahead here. So we yeah, have no time worries. To. Adam, wasn't there one a couple of years ago at uh, Axial Seamount uh, off the Oregon coast? Yeah, that's right. And that is a really unique place on the seafloor because there's a, a fiber optic cable going out to a whole suite of instruments on the seafloor so they could watch that eruption uh, happening in real time from the different sensors that were out there so they could see for example they're measuring the pressure on the seafloor and they could see the seafloor sink down as new lava emerged they could listen to earthquakes happening as as the rock cracked um, and then they could go out after the eruption occurred but uh, weren't able to go out while it was occurring. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is a particularly active volcano in the in the ocean. It's had eruptions, you know, every kind of five to 10 years for as long as people have been looking at it. It's about crazy. 200, 250 miles uh, directly west from where I live on the Oregon coast. These barnacle highways. I know. Not when you get a chance, can you zoom on the barnacles, Jess? Yeah. We're in a pretty good spot yeah. now. Good spot. How about we look at this one here? Actually, I'll go on the back side. All right. Slow our train down a little bit. Bridge now. One more step. One hundred meters, bearing two zero zero. Thank you. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Does this feel right for you guys there? Yeah, it looks great. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for the front row. Yeah. We're not sampling that rock, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> wide, please. When you set the ROV down onto the seafloor, mm -hmm. do you experience a physical sensation as it bumps down? Do we experience a physical Like a phantom bump? No. No. <laughs> I mean, no. I'm, I'm only speaking for myself. Jake, do you? No. No. Do you? 
Do you, Adam? Kind of. <laughs> Interesting. I'm rethinking it, though. Yeah, that's like a known phenomenon. If you see like um, something like a cartoon and it's like shaking, and if you're watching it with no audio, you can hear like boom, boom, boom. Like you can huh. hear your, your your mind is filling in the sound. Yeah, I don't know about the physical. Um, yeah, maybe it is not physical. Maybe it's a little thunk that I hear in my brain. Maybe it's yeah, like the anticipation of it bumping or yeah, hitting. Yeah, I guess if I'm coming in too fast, I'll like tense up and I'll be like, oh, oh no, <laughs> but <laughs> anticipate the landing. I have a couple of viewers asking about the green dots, and that is uh, laser used to measure objects, and they're ten centimeters apart. There's a little fishy. Jess, a question for you, if you could take it. Yeah, sure. Have the uh, ROVs ever gotten stuck? Um, stuck. <laughs> As in, in, a, in like a unable to return to the surface. I don't know, or maybe jammed. Yeah. The so, rock. I guess. Um, the most stuck, I guess, the ROVs have ever been was when uh, a mechan there was a mechanical uh, failure at the termination between Argus and the 6-8 cable, um, and that caused Argus to be anchored on the seafloor for about a week or so, maybe a little bit less than that, probably a few days. Um, and then Herc was uh, tethered to Argus and floating above the Above the above the sea surface, or the sea floor rather. Um, so I guess that's the most stuck they've probably been is by being physically anchored to the sea floor. Um, but and with regards to like getting lodged into crevices, uh, no. Thankfully that 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 we uh, try very diligently to avoid. Sometimes we'll get stuck in really gelatinous mud, but we can thrust out of it. But then. That stuff is stuck on the bottom, so it's really heavy from it. You have to like deal with midwater car wash and hope hope there's enough current that you didn't just <laughs> yeah. dust yourself for ages. One of Wait, the real does. hazards is like old line and stuff on the seafloor, right? That can entangle yeah. you. Yeah, it's too old soon line? to ask Jess about that. Like fishing line? <laughs> ask a fishing line? Oh, no, well, I mean, like we, cable we just don't stuff think like that, that exists anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, a fishing line, fishing gear is very hazardous for our vehicles, and um, we had two encounters last year with fishing gear. Um, Within a couple dives, right? Yeah. There were consecutive dives. It was one after the other, <laughs> um, a day apart. <laughs> an area of known fishing gear. And just draped in an yep. awful amount of ghost gear. When we had to cut ourselves free, we were stuck. Yeah. Big, big piece of line that was... Went all the way down to an anchor and uh, of some sort, and we had to hold one one part of the line with Mongo and grab one of the knives from Hercules and cut ourselves free with the with the craft arm. Yeah, that one. The line was caught between was caught around the tether between yeah. Argus and Hercules, and then the other one was way up in the water column and was the, the six eight cable, the main cable coming down from the ship that holds Argus up, that was kind of ran into a trap with that and had to recover the whole mess. Everybody, the vehicles with the fishing gear, thankfully it wasn't really like, you know, secured to the bottom. Yeah. Once Maybe you guys it. could explain what 6-8 cable indicates. Yeah, it's the steel cable. Um, we have 7,000 meters of it and there's a giant uh, traction winch system that um, allows us to lower Argus to the seafloor, and Hercules has a more flexible tether connecting Argus to Hercules. But that it's called a 6-8 cable because of the width of it. It's 0.68 inches. Yeah, that's correct. And um, yeah, it has power and fiber running through it. It's also strong, um, strong enough to hold up a lot of force. 
have a question the 6 about how is rated to 21,500 or something like that pounds, right? Of tension it can withstand without mechanical, without any damage to the conductors and fibers and stuff. Get a question about how deep the ROVs can go in that that 4,000 meters. Lisa, can you move your mic a little closer? You're kind of yeah. soft, at least for me. Yeah, take care of that. You know, there's a good current again this way. Mm. All right, is that better? Yep. yep. Awesome. Better. Okay. And also, ROV pilots, can you sense the currents? Oh, yeah. Fly? There, they're going now. Um, yeah, we can we can tell by how much we have to thrust and how much um, how stable our shots can get sometimes um, for the amount of current that we're experiencing. We can do another current test after we take a look at the sponge with all of its lovely encrusted bits. It's in our brow. Ah. Sorry about that. This one looks like Whoa. Big Hero 6. What? Whoa. It kind of does. Is that a hole in the back? Yeah, the bolosomas have two holes in the back. That's definitely a bolosoma. Yeah, it does look like Big Hero 6, that. <laughs> and a question about how deep the current ROV pilots have piloted Hercules. I believe that was on this expedition, right? Yeah, this is the deepest I've gone. Almost yeah, don't forth. really go too much deeper than 100 meters shy of, it, of what <laughs> everything's rated to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First dive was pretty close to what we're rated to. Really glassy texture here. Mm. Yeah. Dave, you want to do a partial on the rock here? Way to initiate a rock zoom. Just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> All for you, Adam. That's a tenth of the pride that Steve feels when we identify something <laughs> correctly. <laughs> 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 yeah, these the barnacles are very linear. Does it seem to be matching up with any? It doesn't seem to be well? any Measure like structure fracture? in the rock. Yeah. I think I feel like. Like that's how they related. reproduce or something? Do they like send the next one down the line? They're kind know. of aligned in the current. Yeah, flow and that one there. Yeah, I feel yeah. like they are kind of following the structure. I don't know. They're definitely following the like the aspect, like the current faces. Yeah. And yeah, perhaps there's a micro structure. They do look kind of spaced out nicely. Oh, that's a cool feature. Yeah. Globulus. Globulus. I like that. <laughs> and once again, the measurement between the lasers is 10 centimeters. It's weird because I guess I normally I see barnacles, at, you know, shallow water kind of at the water line or, you know, something related to the sea surface. But here, when they're fully, you know, underwater, mm. I've never really seen something like this. Following a, a path.
See how fast the current's moving with that fish. Yeah, yeah. right. Go, oh, little fishy. We're with you there. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying not to sail away as well. I have an interesting question from a viewer. I'm not sure if we can answer it. Maybe we can crowdsource it to our science chat. But they're asking, do the stalks of the stalk sponges also perform filter feeding? I would guess not, but it's just my guess. Is that yeah, I don't think so. Is that just a, a coral mm -hmm. flopping around? Yeah. Is the black coral? The, the or yeah, the orange thing down there. Let's take a look. It's quite mobile. Yeah. Does indeed look like a black coral. It's twisting around. You would think it's just. That'd be a good stock on that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It got a little more current than they bargained for. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I not, not have too much time here anyway. Yeah. Get my mind around these currents here. Current direction uh, still the same? Yeah, pretty Seems much. Like it, yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Tate. It's very golden coral, though. Science chat suggests that they don't filter feed with their stalks. Black coral. Cool. Is that all current or is that some of us too? No, it's all current. Yeah. Pull wide, please. We can do a current check if you want. Is that a cup coral to the left down there? I think that's an old stock, that one. No, uh, no, right next to the black coral. I missed it. Oh, sorry, Ryan. Might be in the... Um, I'm in a boogie. Yeah, go ahead. Might be in the photo. More Aridicorgia. Primnoids, lots of Chrysogorgia. Bamboo coral, looks like. Not something doesn't surprise me about these fallen stalks and the headless ones in this current. Seems mm -hmm. like you get big enough and just your head falls off. <laughs> so it's a paradox. You are living in the nutrient flow, but the current might be too much. Flying too close to the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some stars shine too bright. All right, one of our favorite questions from viewers. We haven't answered it yet on the shift. Uh, what is the most unusual, interesting, or unexpected thing that you have encountered on a dive? Um, in a good way or a bad way? Yeah, yeah. I'll go with sea spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the picnic gonads, especially the big ones. And like yeah. Really creepy looking. And Super they, creepy. Their body structure, they have their organs are in their legs. Mm -hmm. So their central abdomen area doesn't really look like much. It's just like a bunch of where the legs connect. What did we see earlier today? A pyrosome or something? What was it? 
from the Arizona? No, no uh, the thing that had all the legs. And the oh, the scale. Oh, uh, that was a uh, polychaete, polychaete, a right, very large right. one. I don't know what the species is of that. Those Around the hydrothermal vents, you see a lot of little ones and the scale worms. And some of them have really beautiful iridescent shells on them or scales on them. I think uh, that one was just crazy. Giant isopod is about the weirdest thing I've seen. Yeah. Oh, well, that'd be interesting huh. too. Where'd you see that? Uh, let's see. Fact check. I know it's either the <laughs> East Pacific Rise or the Mid Atlantic Ridge. I cannot remember. Did you see Megan's stuff, giant ice? Zero zero. Reg. No. No. She has one on the ship. That's gross. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. <laughs> We saw one, it was not a giant isopod, but it was a type of isopod. And the species name began with an M, and I can't remember it, but we came across it on a dive, and it was truly, truly terrifying. <laughs> Is that upward facing? Looks yeah. That sponge? Huh. Yeah. A very good catch. Yeah, it's an upward facing mouth of that sponge or oculum does look like its stalk is a little kinked, right? Like if it was sticking straight out, it would yeah. be kind of normal. Yeah. Is it in line with the current, that kink? I think so. It's probably meaning that, yeah, there's Maybe probably it's getting current coming up, down. Yeah. It looks like there is current coming from the top. Oh, but really? Yeah, if we follow the particles in the water, but... I love how they look like they're glowing. The lights. Uh-huh. Because they're all oriented actually up a bit here. Come on, get in the box a bit. That looks like a completely horizontal. Yeah. Plexorid. Mm. Which one? The that one that we just passed. That horizontal. The pink one. Thing? Yeah. Huh. Was yeah. it? I don't know. I think I think it was what. Getting some more black corals. Adam, a viewer is asking if the ferromanganese crust will form on other rocks besides basalt. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll form on uh, any hard surface, and the nodules that uh, form out on the kind of sedimented plains can form around, you know, whale ear bones and. Uh, shark teeth, anything like that. So we're kind of excited to cut some of these open and see what we have on the inside because there's so much crust that we haven't really seen the rock underneath yet. I think that's the... That one might be a paragorgia. Yeah. I don't know. Osaka's on, so maybe she'll tell us. Sorry guys, yeah, I'm kind of zooming past things unfortunately, but that's okay. She can go back and look if she wants to. Once we get over some of these features and I get a little bit more ahead, then we can get some better looks at things. I think you're over here. I'm going to do a cursor reset. That okay. started to drift. I think you're there. Whoa. 
All right, let's not go over the sponge now. <laughs> well, it's a little eerie when you see a shadow on the rock right, above yeah, us. Exactly. <laughs> Did you whisper that one? Yeah. <laughs> what did you whisper? Path, 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 path. <laughs> I think there's a tiny little umbrella pathies we just passed too. Oh, not familiar with those. How can we prove that this is real and not uh, computer-generated imagery? Hmm. Is somebody asking about that, or are you just... <laughs> <laughs> just in case we have to prove it. We could have <laughs> Hercules hold up today's newspaper, but <laughs> we're at sea, so we don't get that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's a very interesting question. We could have a viewer pick a rock for us. <laughs> oh, now that's something. <laughs> that's a good idea, Lisa. Lisa is now watch lead. <laughs> can you, if you can, zoom on that bottom, the now coming in bottom left. Bottom left. The feather? Yeah. You have, you have a second. Where? The, the black coral, that one? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that keeps making me think it's a best asbestos pluma, but it's always oh. it's always a black coral. <laughs> All right, go ahead and push on there, please, Dave. Yeah. Huh. Tiny little black coral. Super fine branches. Do you know the name of that one? Heteropathy? No. I don't know actually. So you could say anything, I'll agree. Oops. Go away, please. <laughs> All right. Get out ahead a little bit. Lots of skeletons here. Oh, kind of wanted to uh, pick up one of the skeletons. Yeah. Uh, one looks detached right there. Yeah. Yeah. A little. Not a good place. To I know. Yeah, you're you're, you're a little behind, but. Well, uh, we can keep an eye on yeah. skeletons yeah. when we're ahead. Let's. Jake has has the arm at the ready. Eventually, yeah. you know, sitting on his lap almost. Let's try to be like ahead of the box. Yeah. Have ability to stop. Certainly more coral abundance up here. Yeah. Yeah, this ridge is awesome. Yeah, it's very, very abundant. Viewers asking about that, um, since this area on the seamount seems um, diverse, more diverse or less diverse in certain places, what would you say that's correlated with most depth, terrain, current? I think we'd love to figure that out i think there's definitely some structure with depth and also with the morphology of the seafloor up on these ridges where you get a lot of current flow there seems to be um, more diversity and then the combination of the two when we're shallower and on one of these ridges it's like a garden Are those the barnacle shells that we're seeing in the crevices there? Collecting in the Oh, sediment. the hash on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if Looks we can like find it. a good spot. It's like to the right here.
Oh, that's just actually just Botryolta texture, isn't it? One of our viewers said that they looked up the image of a giant isopod and they're pretty sure they would have to turn off the live feed if it popped up right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're not this deep, right? Go ahead and push on in there, Steve. No. <laughs> yeah, cute. Looks like it. Yeah. Can we get a, sc a scoop or a slurp of that on the last cruise? Yeah. Yeah, we've got some in the lab. All right, full wide, please. These are very cool colonies here. Okay, we're a little bit out ahead, so you guys see some things you want to look at? Sure. I think we're looking for uh, one of those skeletons to collect. There's that one there in the bottom. Do you have a particular type you want? Uh, bamboo. Bamboo. So like one in front of that coral. Is this a precious coral though, or is that a skeleton, do you think? Oh, there's one up there, laying down. Gonna get the arm out in the ready there, Jake? Sure. Look at this colony. Wow. Had better days, this guy. How about this guy on the bottom here? Yep. Yeah, see if it's get a, a zoom and see. Yeah. Sorry. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Looks like a bamboo right from those nodes yeah yep totally. does i don't know what's on it though huh do you guys not want this one i don't know it's up to adam uh we got a hard wall coming up in oh, there, so. oh there's a wall coming up yep. yeah i can see the return now okay so yeah i'd say get this one then full wide please skip it skip it no uh get it get Take it. it get Take it, it. All right, Colin, grab it real quick there, Jake. All right. Do there we want, like, the whole thing? Yep. Half of it? Just Let's take the whole thing in your hand right thing? now. All right. We're going to zoom out ahead of you. See how gentle it is. Go ahead and push on in there a bit there, please, Dave. That's great. Change your grip force there. I'm watching it. It's okay. Thanks, Jenny. You might have to. Um, yeah, we're at the hall. Change your your C bias and joy gain. Then yeah. Once we get there, but we can put this in the forward bio box. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and grab that there, Jake. Nice. Full wide, please. All right, we're going to. You want to come bring the arm up towards the vehicle? And we're going to leave so quick. And we're going to stow it once we're in a safe position. Okay. Zero six six. 
for a sec, sec. All right, that and should be good there, Jake. Two, two, five. Want to freeze arm and then haul up on that winch? Yeah. Coming up. Good dodge. Hmm? Good dodge of the sponge. <laughs> I lied, I think you're actually over here. For some reason we're stuck over there. Looks like Argus is starting to crest it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I see it more in Argus now. Yeah. See the top of it in the sonar. One of our viewers would like to know what we hope to learn from collecting the remains of coral. Um, Steve was suggesting that if it's a good specimen, you can kind of look at the structure of the skeleton and learn more about the taxonomy. Um, I was interested just because I've never seen one of these skeletons before. And especially the wow. protein part between the um, kind of hard bits. And uh, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to you know, get a little more in touch with the stuff that we're seeing on these seamounts. There's a possibility that you could uh, date the coral as well. So just another item to add to the, the archives. Oh, we were seeing those different, I don't know if they were primnoids or if it was the, or what those were, but now at the top there's all these puffy fine polyp, chrysogorgia. Yeah, yeah, I think they're, we, well we ran into a whole bunch of those little small militaris ones. Yeah, were they militaris? I think so. All right. <laughs> um, ship has stopped moving. Roger. So I'll call in another one shortly. Just want to make sure we catch up all right and everything. Roger that. Um, Looks like we're pretty flat here, so should be yeah. able to zoom ahead and we'll stow that and I'll call you. Yeah, Roger. Uh, science, what, where we want to stow this guy in the let's starboard file? Yeah, let's um, can we just open the box real quick so I can see? I think we have two corals in B, the but I don't the know. Forward, the forward box. Oh, the forward box. Raj, Raj. All right, let me get us a good parking spot. I'm just going to move a little forward again. Yeah. It's pretty flat. Rennie, can you tell if that's an anemone right there? It's a red that one? Yeah. It looks sure. like. Okay. You guys want to get a picture of this little treasure before we start? Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. 
Go ahead and lift it up there, Jake. Nice. All right, full wide, please. This is a pretty big guy. So, sorry, Let's see if my parking position holds. Sorry, guys. A little Sorry. farther ahead. Yeah. Let's try that again up here. So we're gonna put in the toolbox in the front? Yep. All right. Anyone floaty in here? Uh, no, corals. Oh, oh, I lied. There's a floaty coral. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll try that if you wanna try slipping it in like an envelope. Yeah. Just watch, it's super delicate. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's not gonna false make it, but is it going in which one? Let's go ahead and put it in the one with the other corals. Okay. All right. Got you on bubble here, Jake. Let me know if you want me to change your view. Go ahead and try rotating your wrist a little there. Yeah. I need to open it more. It doesn't look like anything's going to float out. Yeah. Yeah, we can try. Oh, oh. I dropped it. All right, you're going to have to go off a bubble. Here. Go off bubble. Unfortunately, yeah, you're going to have to do a bubble grab. That's all right, probably wasn't going to go all the way in, in there anyway. Sorry about that. Gotta readjust here. Oh, it's right next to our infamous scoop. I know. Made this a thousand times harder. Watch the. Yeah. Try changing the wrist, the angle of your wrist to wrist down a little bit. That's that's better. Nice. That's looking good.
Nice. That looks good, Jake. Oh, might have crushed it. It's all good. You still got some pieces there. Ugh. We'll still one at a time. All right. Ready? Nice. Tooling in now. It's kind of just a bit. Yeah, I think that right there is pretty visible. What's your grip force at right now? Three. Okay. Yeah, it's just a skeleton. Yeah, yeah fortunately they're very brittle. All, all good on the Argus front. Thank you. Oh, that's great. That looks like a great pinch grab there. Yeah. Nice and gentle. Get it out of the way of the drawer yeah, while it opens. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. All right. Oh. Drop, drop. All right. Go ahead and just wrist up a little. There you go. Nice. That might be all we can get from the front. Yeah, yeah sounds yeah. good. That's all right. Oh, sorry. sorry, it didn't come in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. It's going to break maybe. up anyway. Yeah, it fits in the box better. Yeah, it fits in there all better. Right, That's one way to look <laughs> at it. <laughs> all good. Nice recovery of the sample. Uh, let's go push out ahead. Uh, Adam, you still want to keep moving along, or is there anything... Um, while uh, we're stopped here that we want to... No, I think we're good. Uh, keep on moving. Okay. Roger that. Keep on moving. One of our viewers is asking how old this seamount is. That's one of the questions I believe we're trying to answer, but what's your best guess, Adam? Uh, best guess is 114 million years. That would put it the Cretaceous, and that would mean it was part of the volcanism that produced the mid-Pacific mountains that are located to the west of here. Uh, second best guess is like 30 million years, which would put it in line with the volcanism that produced the adjacent uh, Hawaiian chain volcanoes. Holy moly, that's a tall one. <laughs> it's a tall one with nothing on it. Oh. oh. It's too tall. <laughs> the starfish tell tales of a headless sponge. <laughs> Thanks to all of our viewers tuning in. Keep sending your questions in the chat. And good morning, Sweden, from Hawaii. Maybe we could find out what a typical breakfast in Sweden is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we let us some, know. We got a Christmas dinner last time. Was yeah. that from Sweden also? That was from Denmark. Denmark. We got Denmark Christmas dinner. We're going for a Swedish breakfast. Mm. We had a viewer asking why we're not really seeing marine snow falling. Uh, Rennie? <laughs> <laughs> What? Why aren't we seeing any marine <laughs> snow falling? I don't know. It could be the currents. Some areas. Well, around here, the, it's like... It's a lycotrophic...
incredibly Ocean, clear. Right? So there's not a ton of productivity in this entire Papanaumakuakea area. Whoa, big old sponge. That's a pretty one. Oh. Poly what? Polyopagon. Is that the sponge? Polyopagon? Yeah. Okay. All right, Dave, you want to push right. on in a bit, please? <laughs> That's so useless back here. That's great there. Let's do a partial on these guys. Especially because I'm moving around a bit. Reminds me of a croc. A croc? <laughs> yeah, like those big rubber shoes. I don't see it. <laughs> you do have to squint pretty hard. All right. Take your word on it. All right, full wide there, please. Thanks, Dave. Question for our pilots. Has Have either of our ROVs ever had a microphone on board? Um, I'm not sure about on board our ROVs because you do hear primarily just thrusters. Um, but... We have been putting down, we have put down hydrophones in the past, um, in which you put down a hydrophone and back away. And uh, ideally, you get far enough away, you don't hear the thrusters. Yeah. My advisor did some work. Uh, they recorded the radiated noise off of ROVs, and I think they actually studied Hercules in particular, like a few years back, um, maybe like five or ten years ago. Um, but they found that it's pretty loud and that there's a lot of avoidance due to the noise in the water column, especially when they're going, when, uh, we're descending through the water column, when we go through like the midwater zone, there's a lot of avoidance, uh, with that layer of, um, what is it? The deep scattering layer. There's a lot of avoidance of those creatures. I'd be curious about, um, the difference between, uh, Vehicle with hydraulics and an all electric vehicle. So like for the noise levels? Noise, yeah, yeah and, and avoidance. Yeah. Go ahead and push on there, please, Dave. When I've put a hydrophone on Alvin, it was the hydraulics that were by yeah. far the loudest. <laughs> yeah, and you can hear it on deck. <laughs> Is that our uh, Militaris? Or Miligorgia? All right, full wide there, please, Dave. And what about those single stocked ones? Let's say the bamboo what? corals, are they? Bamboo, and then maybe, or it looked like a bamboo. Not all single stock ones are bamboo, but it's a good chance. And then the other one was that black coral we saw earlier. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. At least it appeared to be. A little brittle star on it. Do one more bump to the side here. seeing the bamboo structure in this one but doesn't mean it isn't in there all right full wide there please dave it may not be a bamboo mm -hmm. all right you guys ready to jet up a hillside again yep
We have a viewer asking if anyone on the crew is local to the expedition. And Megan is our local. She's a marine biologist with the University of Hawaii at, Man Hawaii at Manoa. There were more locals on the last expedition when we were in the Papahanaumokuakea National Marine Monument. Yeah, in fact, some of the broadcasts were done in Hawaiian, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, some of the the interactions, the ship to shore, used a translator on land. We have a viewer asking about some cool things that have been found on this dive so far. They're just tuning in. Um, maybe, Sarah, can you talk about the things we've collected? Uh, yep. So we've collected multiple corals, um, some really cool anemones, and some really neat uh, sea cucumbers. So um, there's a woman in Florida who's studying the contents of the sea cucumber stomachs. Um, We've recovered several colors um, and then some awesome rocks, which I am partial to. <laughs> we got a pretty neat purple crinoid as well. Yeah. You know, it seems kind of funny that this area would be less, would have less life on it. I wonder if it's the angle of the slope or maybe some section that just doesn't have enough, the same kind of current. Yeah, what do you think, Jess? Is the current a little decreased here? Let's try. Yeah, a little bit. You don't see also the particles flowing in the water. This is uh, more gentle here. But I gotta imagine the currents, you know, shift around a bit. I'd imagine that's like based on the topography, right? Or the yeah. topology. Topography. You were right. Yeah. I guess topology would be considered any type of surface structure, huh? I've never topology fully understood like the definition of topology. Yeah. It's like how things how connect things to each connect, other. Yeah, interaction and oh. layering, but not not topography. Oh, very nice. We have a viewer wondering if the stalks of those sponges are, and maybe even the holdfasts on the corals, are they attaching to the rocks themselves or the stuff that covers the rocks? Yeah, they attach to the uppermost surface. So the what's precipitated on the rocks is millions of years old, and the the corals themselves are not not that old. So. They are attaching right onto the ferromanganese crust. But we definitely have also seen some that 